Welcome back. And responding to Farooq Abdullah's interview, earlier today I spoke to a few Kashmiri pundits who were forced to flee the Kashmir Valley in the 1990s when Farooq Abdullah was the chief minister of JNK. Listen in to what they said about the situation in which they were forced to leave at gunpoint. So Dr. Farooq Abdullah speaking exclusively to India today says all of this is bunch of lies, propaganda, hatred and importantly he wasn't even in the government at that point. Uh, why blame it on him, hang him if the investigation proves he's at fault. Is he lying or are the Kashmiri pundits lying? I have now on the panel I'm joined by Utpal Kaul, I'm joined by Amit Rena, I'm joined by Sunita Bhan, all three of them. All three of them have first-hand accounts of how they were forced to flee. And they will now reply to that interview of what Farooq Abdullah has told India today. I want to start with you, Utpal Kaul. You saw first-hand what happened. When you fled the Kashmir Valley, you told me all you had was a refugee bus ticket. The bus ticket that you took when you had to flee in the middle of the day out of fear. And that, when we'll have that for our viewers as well in just a short while. But when Farooq Abdullah says, I had nothing to do. I was not in the government. It was Jagbohan. And I know you've been trying to counter these charges for the longest time. Again, it is being put forward. What do you say today, Mr. Utpal Kaul? I was listening to, uh, thank you very much, Pooja Ji. I was listening to Farooq Abdullah. And I felt if uh, Mahatma Gandhi was speaking, he was speaking and he was the greatest uh, human uh, rights person on earth and he was such a fantastic uh, administrator and he did all the good things. Let me give you the first hand account. The first killing in the June, uh, a priest of Gatsar Nag and we informed that some militancy and terrorists have, are getting active in Kashmir but no action. And then on 13th of September, when Tikalal Teplu was assassinated yes. just outside his home at 9.30. And I just reached 11 o'clock to his, he was very, very close to me. I, we were working together. And so I went to his home. There were thousands of people and I was with the dead body. I just was on the right side of dead body. And then Farooq Abdullah, and his minister, Pyarel Al Hundu, Director General of Police, MP of Srinagar, all these people arrived. And I took the white sheet, which was on uh, Tikal Al Teplo, I took it and showed the blood, uh, blood wounds to uh, Farooq Abdullah. And I told him, You, Farooq Abdullah, you are the chief minister. This is the security you are providing me. And he said, you want security? I said, no, I don't want security. I want security for my community. And this was the security he was providing. And within short time on 4th of uh, November, then they assassinated the uh, uh, justice. And, uh, Nilkan Ganju. Yes. And then, then, then Nilkan Ganju. And then it started like anything. Then the turning point was when they assassinated Prem Nath Bhatt on 27th of December. And within short time, hundreds and hundreds of Kashmiri pundits were assassinated. And what he was doing at that time. And Jagmon was not in the picture. Jagmon came later on. And uh, he had uh, his friends in uh, London. When he was in uh, London, he, he had very good relation with JKL. Why don't he talk about uh, his relationship with the JKL? Uh, it was shown uh, his pictures on India Today also in the magazine. Then uh, uh, how, how he was shaking hand with um, Amanullah Khan. Utpal Kaul, does it, does it make you angry? Does it make you disheartened that after all these years, politicians from the Kashmir Valley are still peddling the same narrative while you are saying I have first-hand account. I know that he was busy uh, playing golf, attending cultural functions while Tikalal Taplu and Neelkant Ganju were being killed in broad daylight. What What is the emotion that you feel right now? I am so disarmed. They are, they are a bundle of liars. They are liars. For all these 32 years, they are t uh, telling lies. And these they were two very important people who were responsible. In Delhi, it was Mufti Muhammad Said, and in Srinagar, it was Farooq Mubdullah. And it was such a tragedy. These two incompetent uh, persons were in charge of Jammu and Kashmir and the Home Department of 
India. And how these thousands of Kashmiri young boys went to Pakistan and when the buses were in Srinagar and Baramula and Kopwara saying Pindi, 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 and they were going for training. What was his police department doing? Yes. What was his CID department yes. doing? They are a bundle of lies telling. And, and, and it is knew. important to put in perspective. I'll, I'll go across to Amit Rena now. Uh, he resigns on 18 January, 19 January. Uh, Jagmohan takes over. By then, the situation was completely out of control. It was already mayhem. So it was not that the Kashmiri Pandits suddenly fled in the on 19 January. There were already so much sloganeering, mob violence that was taking place. But Amit Rena, when Farooq Abdullah says, hang me, if I am proven that I am guilty, but this is just this is just propaganda. This is uh, hate against a community. What do you say to this, Amit Rena? Because I know how Kashmiri pundits for years are trying to uh, counter these uh, narrative and these lies of politicians. But again, they say, "Hang me if I am proven guilty." Puja, he knows he will not be hanged uh, in this country, even if Bitta Karat and Yasim Malik are not hanged. Farooq Abdullah. Is a, has been a former CM, has been a polit is a politician, so he knows he won't be hanged, so he can make any claims. I still remember the day I left Srinagar. I was carrying a suitcase. I was told by my parents that I'll be back in 15 days. And first time I went back home was not 15 days. I went home 15 years later as a tourist. And that pain still lives with me. It probably we have spent now a lifetime outside Kashmir and probably in another decade or two decades I may know, I may not even live. But one thing even then I will continue to do is to get justice for my community and to go home. This one pain cannot go away. Farooq Abdullah has been lying, lying and lying. He, he, he conveniently forgets to mention that he released 70 terrorists between July 1989 yes. and December 1990, uh, 90, uh, 1989. And those 70 terrorists went and created multiple organizations which went and persecuted Kashmiri Pandits. He conveniently does not tell you that on 19th of January, when the exodus started, he was the CM. He resigned on 19th of January, not on 18th of yes. January. His resignation is dated 19th of January. He resigned uh, because he knew now things are beyond my control. I have delivered what Pakistan wanted for me to do. And Kashmiri Pandits are now going to be hounded out. It was his father who in the book called Atishir Chinar, which is the biography of Sheikh Abdullah, writes Kashmiri Pandits are the fifth columnist of Kashmir. A fifth columnist is the one who conspires against the nation. And so he was. it was his way of telling Kashmiri Muslims that Kashmiri Pandits are the blockade in your freedom. They are the people who will who are stopping Kashmir from becoming Islamic of Kashmir. So it was a very classification discrimination from the beginning and they were conspiracies to ensure Kashmiri Pandits are hounded out. And that is what happened on 19th January. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, which sensible politician resigns on a day when things are He will step and try to save the situation. Uh, he did not. He ran away because he knew now th and he was hoping that we India will lose Kashmir. We as a nation should be thankful to Jagmohan that he saved Kashmir for us on, 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 subs on, on that day. Otherwise, India would have lost Kashmir you, and Kashmir would have been dead. Amit Rana, now. you've just made a very important point. Which chief minister in the middle of mayhem where targeted killings, mob violence is taking place against and inhuman torture against the Hindu Kashmiris, which chief minister suddenly resigns and says, you know, I, I can't do this and this while it was building up, it was not sudden and then centre has to take over. Let's go across to Sunita Bhan. Sunita, the slogans that were made against women uh, to have Kashmir with, uh, with the Kashmiri Hindu women, the men need to leave the valley, all these slogans that were uh, made from uh, the rooftops, from mosques, all of these are first-hand documented accounts. What is your first-hand experience and when you hear of Farooq Abdullah saying it was all a conspiracy, this is propaganda, this is hate, uh, the, you know, so many others have suffered. You tell us as a Kashmiri Pandit woman, what was it like in the 90s to be living through that hell and then you had to flee and live elsewhere? Uh, yeah, it was really a hell. Abhi ye jo propaganda keh rahe hai, aisa kuch nahi hai. They all are lying. Aur wo hume bhi pata hai ki wo jhoot bol rahe hai. Agar thik hai, ab jab hum log ja rahe the Kashmir se, tab wo kaha the? तब हमें कोई भी वो क्यों बचाने नहीं आए हमें या उन्होंने तब हमें ये क्यों नहीं कहा कि आप अपने घर छोड़ के मत जाओ अगर वो सच में वो इंसानियत होती उनमें मैं हम मैं अपना ही एक एपिसोड बताऊंगी कि मेरे डैडी ने बोला कि हम लोग नहीं जाएंगे बाकी जितने भी लोग निकल रहे निकलने दो हम कश्मीर में ही बैठेंगे और 
दो तीन दिन के बाद क्या देखते हैं हमारा जो मेन एंट्रेंस था गेट पे हम एक बड़ा सा बैग देखते हैं उसमें बीफ था और उस पर इंक से लिखा था कि आप लोग कुछ तीन चार दिन है आपके पास आप यहाँ से चले जाओ आपके लिए अच्छा होगा और इतना दहशत मच गया था और हमने क्या किया फिर हम वहाँ से लगभग दो दिन में तीन दिन में हम वहाँ से एम्बेसडर गाड़ियों में निकले हैं डर के मारे वो भी मुझे लगता है रात को एक बजे दो बजे ऐसा हम निकले सिर्फ हम लोगों ने फेरन पहना था और कुछ नहीं बस ये था कि हम यहाँ से निकल जाए Uthpal Kaul, when you hear these accounts, when you hear these politicians, it must take a lot of, lot of restraint of so many years to to counter it in as civil a manner. When you know the politician is lying, when you know there is narrative that has been built against the Kashmiri pundits, while they were the ones to face the torture and and to imagine now what must have happened 32 years ago. All the sloganeering mob violence, and the chief minister says, I I, I will resign. I I will go to London. and for years he was in london and before that he was playing golf and attending a cultural function at the martand temple when after after tikalal taplu had been assassinated i i tell you uh, this uh, sheikh mohammed mohammed abdullah and his family sheikh abdullah wanted to uh, replace maharaja hari singh and so he did that yeah. maharaja when maharaja hari singh uh, left kashmir and sheikh abdullah took and then he thought now it will be sheikh dynasty and it is like that uh, after the sheikh mohammed abdullah his son farooq abdullah and then his son umar abdullah now they have started this dynasty and they don't do anything they think they are raja maharajas of kashmir and so when there is some uh, trouble when it was a big problem in kashmir and he as a father figure in kashmir he is the responsible uh, national conference president and the chief minister he should have been with his people and yes. he was having a nice time in london and it was a shame it is a shame for him that he left kashmir and left people okay. to fend for themselves and let me also tell you jagmohan had absolutely no role i was a leading publisher of kashmir we had a huge uh, house and a um, very good business and my 5000 books were burned my uh, phd Uh, data for years which i had collected that was burnt should i listen to jagmohan that um, leave kashmir and then you will come after picnic no. it was not like that we are lucky that we saved our life we are saved we saved honor of our daughters and our mothers and then we didn't care for our property we didn't care yes. for anything and now this nation must rise and say kashmiri pandits and all those who were killed by all these terrorists yes. by jkl by jamaat is by hindu jihadi i think that's a very important be, point that uh, mr they, 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 i i mean there'll Should never be enough there'll never be enough time for for to to listen to to what you have to say but i think finally the nation and finally india and the world is listening and and more power to all of you uh keep speaking your truth thank you for joining us on india today because this is a discussion that will be ongoing but your accounts will of course have the four most importance thank you so much for joining us remember this is the big discussion farooq abdullah's interview to india today everyone's been talking about it reactions coming in we'll have that through the day on india today thank you for watching take care